Hey Bremerton, Josh Farley with the Kitsap Sun out at Olympic Sports Center inside Pendergast Park today. The weather may be getting a little bit colder and a little bit rainier, but it's just about to heat up in here. I've got that story along with five total that you just got to know about happening in Bremerton this week. Welcome back to this edition of the Bremerton Beat Blast, sponsored by the Admiral Theatre. Story number one today, we begin at 4180 Kitsap Way. Many of you may have dined there in years past, perhaps at the Panda Inn. But for the past decade, this restaurant space has been closed. Until now. The owners of the Dugout Sports Bar are just about to throw the doors open to the community. And I wanted to bring you this sneak peek. It was all covered in drywall and uh, brown paint and plywood and carpenter ant. It's a complete transformation. Yeah. So we got nice granite countertops, uh, got a nice pull tab bar, tore down walls, put up new walls, uh, totally redid the kitchen. You know, basically we took it down down to the studs and just kind of built it back up from there. Yeah. I think we really wanted that open concept, so we've uh, taken away a lot of all the little walls that were in here, closing places off, and just opened it up. Yeah. Want to take advantage of that view out there, you know, it's gorgeous looking down there. Want, want you to be able to see that from wherever you're sitting inside the uh, restaurant. Story number two today, a new mayor will be taking office in Bremerton come January. Councilman Greg Wheeler defeated Patty Lent, the eight-year incumbent, at the ballot box this past week, taking 55% of the vote. But before we talk with Mayor-elect Wheeler about his intentions for office in the coming weeks ahead, I wanted to take a moment to reflect on Mayor Lent's legacy this past eight years and what she feels are her most important marks on the city that she led. The leadership is something that I'm probably most proud of. We have seven directors that are all on the same page. They're working for the benefit of the residents that live here and for what the city has a vision for. The city has a look of its own and its own charm, but when you see new roads that have been really in disrepair and that were built in 1940s, we're excited to have sidewalks and bike lanes and things that make it a welcoming neighborhood. The fast ferry in its little stumble of a start. Um, I believe that next year it will actually be adopted by King County Marine and that's how we went out to the voters. That was our original thought and now that we've got it started we've got the boats that are going to be replacing um, the Kingston run. We know what the needs are and we just need someone that's not transit to really take off with it. We are recipients of a brand new boat, which we haven't had on our run forever. And we worked very hard from the day I got here to make sure that we kept our ferry services. I kind of like that we have businesses that have come into the city from out of state. The theater was going to come to Kitsap County somewhere. We needed it in the city, and they came up from Oregon. Winco came from Idaho. Those are things that are really going to stabilize us. And I love it when this city is not like any other. We're not just tall buildings like Bellevue. We're not a little four square miles like Paulsbo. But we have all kinds of unique things that will last us for a long, long time. Story number three today, Bremerton's not just getting a new mayor in January, we'll also be getting a new police chief. Steve Strand, the police chief for the past five years or so, has taken a job with the Washington Association of Sheriffs and Police Chiefs and will serve as its executive director as it implements policy at a statewide level. Strand believes he's helped make the Bremerton Department more transparent and heads to Olympia with an enthusiasm to make even bigger changes statewide. People have sometimes asked me, what other thing would you like to do in your career before you're done? And I, and I frequently would say, I love the policy part of this job. You know, law enforcement is changing so rapidly that it has so many challenges, as you know. And uh, with the way things are changing, I. I'm always asking, how do we do this better? How do we work with each other to do it better? It gives me the opportunity to work with, with chiefs and sheriffs across the state and to, uh, to affect policy. And that's incredibly exciting. And so it's probably the only thing that could have taken me from Bremerton PD, but I'm really excited for the opportunity. Story number four. Here we are at Olympic Sports Center at Pendergast Park, home of all things indoor soccer related for all of Kitsap County. But did you know there are women's and men's pro teams that operate here that you can come and watch? The Olympic force teams are due to start up soon, and here is your preview. 
if you think of uh, a bottle of Diet Coke when you drop the Mento in and it explodes, that's, that's what a force indoor game is. We average a little over 300 fans a game um, inside and Saturday we have our, with the start of our fourth season, um, our home opener on Saturday, uh, 7.30 kickoff here. We'll be taking on um, the defending champion, Bellingham United. And finally, story number five today. For 12 years running, Juanita Atkins of Olala has completed the half marathon portion of the Seattle Marathon, which takes place Sunday after Thanksgiving. But Atkins is not your normal marathon runner. At 92, she is the oldest participant in the entire Seattle Marathon. Here's Juanita's inspirational story on the eve of her final Seattle Marathon. I do it because I can do it. <laughs> I try to walk at least three times a week, and at least one of those walks uh, seven miles or more, seven to ten miles. I've seen a lot of parks I wouldn't have seen, little pocket parks, and a lot of Seattle that I wouldn't have seen if I hadn't been on foot. That's going to do it for this edition of the Bremerton Beat Blast. One more thing, don't forget to keep an eye on Puget Sound this fall. You never know what you might see. Heidi DeCarly Brown captured this school of what appears to be herringfish being chased around by dozens of sea lions and seals within the waters surrounding Illahi State Park. Thanks for the amazing video, Heidi, and we'll see everybody again next week. Music for this week's Bremerton Beat Blast was performed by Daryl Thomas, a.k.a. Smiley D. Smiley D will be performing with Afton Prater at the Hard Rock Cafe in Seattle at 7.30 p.m. on November 18th.